Okay, I'm so excited. I'm Violet Dayala, the founder from City, for those watching replay. And I'm going to lead us in. Of course, now I'm getting all the text, sharing my screen. I'm going to lead us in our October masterclass today. So let me go ahead and share my screen. There's probably going to be like 20 tabs open. I know Leslie's used to seeing my screen with all sorts of tabs open. All right. Let's see. Here we go. This is why I like StreamYard better. StreamYard is like so much easier with the transition. It looks so pretty. All right, so this class was requested. And if there's ever a class that you want me to teach, just message me and say, could you teach this class? And I'm happy to do so. Um, I just, I literally take what you guys want from me and I put it together as a class. So today we're gonna talk about authentic leadership and embracing your unique style as a woman leader. And I think the reason why this class was requested is because over the last 15 years, I've had so many women ask me about how I was able to create from city with um, my own feminine energy. So it's, um, it's definitely been my own vibe, my own style. And um, I think that a lot of our members want that for themselves as well. Not, not necessarily the way that I've done it, but in their own voice, in their own way. So um, I'm so excited to share with you today, like how you can do that. So let me share the screen down. All right, so really what, what is my objective in this class, every time I write a piece, an article, a blog, I do a video, I always think about the objective and like how, what's my intention. And really my intention with today's class is to help you identify and embrace your unique leadership style. Again, it doesn't have to be like mine. I think the reason why I've found so much success in all the businesses that I've launched is because I've always connected it to authentically who I am. And, you know, I'm a little quirky, I'm a little goofy, I'm a little sappy. And I have been ridiculed about that for many years, especially when I started from city that I wasn't serious enough or I wasn't masculine enough. And I, you know, should be like this. It should be like that. You know, you can't be talking about gratitude. You can't be talking about kindness and community. And um, I just really felt like that was a part of who I am. And that's why um, I really believe that from city attracts women that really have that same intention and that same vibration as well. They also want to be connected in, in a world that has that, that energy. So what is authentic leadership? Let's start with just the basics. It's the way that you manage, right? It's that management style that involves acting in your own genuine and sincere way. That's true to who you are. So if I look at um, Julie and I look at Leslie, like everyone has their own uniqueness. We might have similarities, but we all have our own uniqueness. And it's really important, I believe, in order for you to be successful to have that shine and it, it may not win over everyone like i know there are some people that don't like the way i show up in this world but that's okay i'm authentic to who i am and i believe that it really attracts women that also have that same energy so you're not going to there's no way 100 percent of the people in the world are going to like you or want to connect to you but when you do find that community and you do show up in your authenticity and in your genuine um, spirit it definitely does help and it radiates and it attracts more abundance, I believe. So um, it's these key characteristics that we're talking about today. So I know there's a lot of copy here. <laughs> so there's a lot of information that I was like, this is probably not going to be an easy 30 minute class. It could have been like a couple weeks of courses. But the first thing is when we talk about those characteristics, I know sometimes people are like, well, what does that mean? Like, what does it mean to you know, have these key characteristics. I broke them down into things that I think have made a difference. The first one is being transparent. Um, you know, authentic leaders are really open about their roles, their challenges, and their decisions. I feel like if you think about the people that you love most on Instagram, or maybe the, the celebrities that you like the most as well, they're generally people that you have seen glimpses of who they really are. And that has made you stay connected to them. It, may, it has made it so that they are someone who you really admire or look up to. They're generally people that have shared those transparencies, the vulnerability. Um, they're, they're sharing their thought process. They're honest about their mistakes. That generally really helps us to connect to other humans. So being transparent with your own journey, it's not to say to sit there and talk about all the bad problems you've had and all the horrible things. But I feel like part of my journey with Femme City was you know, sharing stories about, you know, 
um, hitting rock bottom financially, you know, having to navigate getting out of welfare and on food stamps into creating, you know, million dollar businesses. Um, that was, you know, definitely something that radiated with a lot of our members and, and made them that they wanted to be a part of some city or even the struggles with my mother and her drug addiction, you know, sharing those stories. So I'm not harping on them, but I'm sharing those stories authentically and I'm being transparent. So that's one of the key elements as well. The second one is being self-aware. Authentic leaders assess their own weaknesses, strengths, and values, and they practice self-reflection and ask for feedback. So one thing that I feel um, that is something that I've done and I continue to do so is I like asking people's feedback, um, especially women in our community. What, you know, would this help you? What do you think about what you're going through? What are some things that I can give you to help you navigate this specific challenge as an example? Or even when we started Fem City and our, our logo, our slogan, everything that I was creating, I was constantly asking for feedback from our community. So always having that time to reflect, to see like, where are the faults? Where are those little holes and how can you fill them? But being self-aware is really important because we're not perfect. And the things that we create today may be different tomorrow. So having that, the ability to always reflect and assess how you're standing, where the weaknesses are really helps to make it so that you come through as a very authentic leader. The third one is being ethical. So authentic leaders act in the best interest of the people they lead. And you can probably think about maybe a former boss that you've had in the past or some that you've worked with in the past that, you know, maybe wasn't the most up and up. Maybe they uh, never really put the best interests of the team uh, at the forefront. Those are are generally leaders that don't, they don't inspire. They don't make changes in this world. They don't leave like really big moments of social impact, positive social impact. They make decisions. The ones that are very authentic leaders, they make decisions based on principle rather than a short-term success. So even some of the mentors that you have in your life, maybe those are the ones that are like, have been the most ethical. They, they make the right decision. Even if it's a very hard decision to make, they always choose the right way. Um, another characteristic that comes to mind when it comes to authentic leadership is being committed to self-improvement. So authentic leaders are committed to working on themselves and becoming better. And when others see you doing this, it inspires them also to look within themselves and see how they can improve. Um, we're not perfect beings. Every day, you know, just to strive and say, how can I be a better human today? How can I be more empathetic, more compassionate? Every day working on that self-improvement really does shine the light as to how your authenticity, the sense that you have for leadership, and it inspires others to do the same, which feels really good as well. Um, the next one is building relationships. So authentic leaders inspire trust and build genuine relationships with their employees. And I will even add the people that follow them on social media or subscribe to their emails. So building that trust is really important. You know, sometimes we have new members that come in and they're like, I'm not getting any traction at all. Like I'm just sending these emails out. And then I'm like, well, let me see, let's see the emails. And the emails are one-sided, right? I'm the best. I'm so great. I'm the best. I'm so great. No one really wants to hear that. That's not building relationships. Can you imagine having lunch with a friend? Then all she does is talk about how great she is. No one wants to hear that. They want to build relationships, right? They want to have conversations. They want to make sure that everyone is learning in that interaction, benefiting each other equally, both back and forth. So building relationships, whether it's through email marketing, through social media, really does help to create that authentic leadership that we all strive to. And then, of course, prioritizing that organization. So authentic leaders focus on the success of the organization within the construct of the social values. So prioritizing your brand, your community, the team that you're building that will really make a huge difference as the way that people see you and follow you and commit and refer business in your direction when you prioritize that versus being one that's more, um, I, I guess the opposite of that would be more like a, nar a narcissistic kind of approach to that. And, I'll, and when I'm done, I'll, I'll, we'll have time for some Q&A. Um, the importance of leading with integrity and staying true to personal values. So this is one that comes up often. I did a video many years ago on YouTube about, you know, how to be um, an ethical person and how to um, stay true to your personal values. It's crucial for effective leadership because it fosters trust and it builds positive work environment, it motivates employees, it motivates others that you work with. It enhances your credibility. It ultimately leads to better decision-making and stronger organizational culture. Um, at the end of the day, it means that when you're working within your belief system, even in challenging situations, 
it is really a, a essential part to gain respect and loyalty from those that you lead. And again, I'm going to add not only those that you lead, but also those that follow you on Instagram, on Facebook, on LinkedIn. Um, it really makes a huge difference being that point person that they can trust. If you think about the people that you admire most in your life, whether it's someone that you know, or maybe it's someone that you admire from afar, whether it's on a YouTube channel or a TV show, generally speaking, sometimes these people are the ones that you feel have integrity, that you um, believe that they're showing up in there and they're making a difference in the world by putting others and the organization first. Okay, so now let's, we've talked about characteristics, the key characteristics of authentic leadership for women leaders. We've talked about each one individually. You probably have already seen yourself in some of those. Some of them you may have been saying to yourself, you know what, I probably need to dive into that a little bit more. So then how do you start discovering your, your unique leadership style? I know it's really challenging when you see others and uh, you're like, oh, I love how they're showing up. I love their leadership. Let me be like that person. I find that sometimes that's not the best method because then you're forgetting your beauty, your greatness, and everyone is so special individually. And so it's really important for us to dive in and do the self-reflection exercise. So you can see like, how are you going to show up, show up in your own unique beauty in your greatness that you have so that you're not like me, you're not like somebody else, you are like yourself, but the greatest version of that. And that's your, so that's your authenticity and your vulnerability and, um, just that's the way that um, you show up authentically as a leader. So we're going to talk about the exercises. Um, first of all, the self-awareness is really a key. I think the, the time that I grew the most was when I dived in deep and I really started becoming more self-aware. So looking at past relationships, looking at past scenarios, um, looking to see like where I was responsible, where I... Um, was able to amplify my strength, where I was able to kind of like find out who I was with my character, the characteristics that made me a unique, authentic leader. Um, so start asking yourself these questions. These are questions that are not fancy. They're not glamorous. Um, they're messy. There might be some tears, but really kind of dive in and um, start kind of looking to see like where you can amplify your awareness as to um, who you are and your authenticity. There's one thing that comes up when we talk about this conversation about being this authentic leader and showing up in your greatness and shining bright and inspiring others to do the same. I know that imposter syndrome comes up often. So I wanted to include it in today's class because I know that this is a topic that comes up so many times, even with my personal friends. Um, so I found this information out and I thought this was really, really great. So what are the three C's of imposter syndrome? Like, how do we even, how do we even get there? And um, I found that it's imposter syndrome can feel like anxiety or low self-esteem, even like a mild depression, or maybe a little bit more depression or even frustration. And I found this to be really beneficial, at least for myself, by following the three C's of strategy, clarify, choose and create, you can ease the symptoms and gain control over your thoughts and your life. So the first phase is to clarify, right? So understand your origin story. This might be with your money story. This might be with your love story. This might be with the story that you tell yourself about what kind of leader you are. We have imposter syndromes going on all the time. So even just clarifying and kind of when you're doing that self-awareness exercise that we talked about in the previous screen, thinking about that clarification also, like where that story started, where that narrative started that's keeping you back. When did you start thinking badly about yourself? When did you start thinking about um, that you're never going to be successful or you're never going to have money? Like what's that original story and how did that show up? When you dive into that, it really helps to release some of the narratives that are holding you back. The second one is choosing the conscious behavioral choices to break that imposter syndrome. So for myself, I had a really bad money story and a really bad love story. <laughs> so I had imposter syndrome with both of those. And so once I was able to kind of dive in deep, find that narrative, that origin, the origin story, origin story, I was able to then selectively choose to change the narrative in my mind to understand what the triggers were and to understand why I was having these thoughts and to rewrite my story, to rewrite it from a place of strength. And um, that really helped for me to change my money story and to also change my love story, how I defined the love that I was, um, that I received. And then the third part is you're going to create that environment that supports moving away from the imposter syndrome. So again, rewriting your narrative so that you can release that imposter syndrome. So rewriting it as an example of my money story, 
I was like, I'm never going to make more money. I'm always going to be stuck in this, this uh, financial place. I'm never going to be able to make my bills. So those are the narratives that I kept hearing myself say over and over again. I dove in deep and thought like, what's the clarification? Where did that origin story happen? Where did it start? I found, you know, when I was younger, my parents had some financial situations that were happening. So I started with that kind of broke that down and then chose to change the narrative. I started kind of removing the triggers, kind of starting to see where the triggers were. And I rewrote it to say, that's not true. That's not my story. That doesn't define me. This is how my money story is going to be from now on based on, you know, I've, I've always had opportunity around me. I have had great, um, great, uh, moments of abundance in my life as well. So I was able to go ahead and narrate that. So anyway, there's more information here too. I'm happy to share the um, PDF with you all as well. But here are some more um, things that I found when it comes to imposter syndrome as well. Catch, you know, notice that thought that you're having. Check to see, is it helping me? Is it not helping me? Uh, most likely it's probably not helping you. And then you're going to change it to go ahead and make it more helpful way of thinking, kind of like changing that narrative so it supports your greater purpose. Okay. And then the confidence piece also is a really big piece that's connected to the imposter syndrome and also the authentic leadership. So focusing on your strengths and accomplishments, I call these, uh, you know, counting your receipts, looking at your receipts, all the years you've put in with your industry, your experience that you have, the skills that you've obtained, the work that you've done. Those are your strengths, your accomplishments, practicing positive self-talk. So really focusing on lifting yourself up with kind words and catching it when it turns into that negative. You know, if it's coming from a place that's not helpful, that's a negative talk. Let's go ahead and find those triggers and rewrite that story. And then the third piece is to surround yourself with supportive people. I know this can be really challenging. Um, find women in Fem City that will help to support you. There are hundreds and hundreds and thousands of women in Fem City. Surround yourself with that energy because it will definitely help you. Sometimes you don't have the option to have a partner that supports you or family members to support you. At least within Femme City, you will have members, other uh, women in the community that will help to support your dreams and your authenticity. So I'm going to stop my screen share. Those were a lot of words. Oof. Any questions you guys have? I know I rushed through that. My goal was to get through, so we have 10 minutes of Q&A. So I'm, I'm like, yay, we're good. Um, any questions? Kate, so nice to see you. And if you don't have any questions you want to say out loud because you're shy, you can put it in the chat because I'm not sharing my screen anymore. Okay. All right. Any topics you want me to teach in the future? Let me know. I'm happy to. I do this every month, so I don't have one yet for November. So whatever you guys want me to teach, let me know. I was wondering about that imposter syndrome. Like, could like uh, there be other symptoms like uh, procrastination? <laughs> like, like I think you were mentioning things that what you feel about yourself, but uh, how, how about your behavior? Yeah, I love that. So um, another example I'll share about my life is I am a former publicist. So I'm really good at getting people in the news. When I started from city, I constantly was adding on my to-do list to pitch from city. Wasn't doing it. Wasn't doing it. Wasn't doing it. I'm like, what is happening here? So I keep on pushing it off, pushing it off, pushing it off. I hired people. I remember once we hired someone with three thousand dollars a month retainer. It's crazy. Had that for years. Did nothing. So I was like, what is happening? I keep procrastinating. Like, I can do this. I know how to do this. I've done it for other people. Like, why can't I get from city into newspapers and magazines? And I did those three C's. I found the origin story because I was like, there's something happening here. So my origin story was if I promote them city into the news, I'm really promoting myself. And if I'm promoting myself, it means I'm a narcissist and that would make me a narcissist like my mother was. And I don't want to be like my mother. That was literally my origin story. All of that. And then I was like, that is so ridiculous. Of course, I'm not like my mother. So I go into the next one, right? Clarify, choose. So I'm choosing. I'm not like my mother. I'm nothing like her. So, you know, if I really want to impact the world and, and have Femme City there for women around the globe, I need to get Femme City into newspapers and magazines. I need to get us out there so that people will learn about us. Because that's really, if I really want to be a person that changes and leaves a mark in this world, that's going to have to happen. Therefore, it's not about me. It's about the work that I'm doing. 
I just happened to be like tagged along with it. And as soon as I did that, we got into Entrepreneur Magazine, Success Magazine. Like I got into literally every single publication within like 30 to 45 days. So it, it shows up. Absolutely. It shows up in behaviors as well. So anytime you catch yourself repeating, like you're not doing something or you're feeling bad about something, or, you know, you're having those conversations, like stop and, and go into that self-awareness, go into that clarity and say, okay, what's happening here? What's the origin story? I had it with PR. I had it with um, my money story. I had it with my love story. I had it with my health. You know, I had it with my, my I'm asthmatic. I have uh, three tor- uh, uh, herniated discs. I got torn ACL, I've got all these things. So I was like hurting all this stuff. You know what I mean? Like every, everything you have going on in your life, that's holding you back from being this brighter, shinier light that you can be. There's something there. Just asking yourself those questions and diving in will help you to move forward. And by the way, you will fix that right? So I fixed the PR thing and I was like, woo. And then I got another one. Like it was like, you know, oh gosh, now I have this one over here. So, you know, it's it, human beings. It's a constant, it's a constant every day. Like, how can I, how can I be better? And it's not to apply pressure to be mean to yourself, but it's literally like, how do I become a better server to others today? How do I become more compassionate than I was yesterday? Asking yourself those questions every day. It's just a, a little way that we can go ahead and make it so that we're just better humans. Does that help you, Leslie? Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah, another thing I was I was thinking about um this the issue about being authentic. I think I was when I just started trying to be a businesswoman, <laughs> like I no, I was I was like, um, like does this mean I have to wear a business suit? Like, you know, I mean, like there's this there's this balance between do I can do I conform with everybody or do I just let my crazy shine and be myself? And also afraid of like offending people if you have like a political view that's different. And if you're like an ethnic minority, like I guess you know about that. And like I'm Jewish and now there's like more anti-Semitism. And should I wear my star? Should I not wear my Jewish star? Should I color my hair? Should I not color my hair? And stuff like that, you know? So um, I guess I struggle with that. But you're saying go for it. Be authentic. (laughs) Yeah, I think, you know, um, I think when we show up as to who we are, what defines us? Like you just shared right now, key characteristics of of who you are. Showing up like that, you know, wearing, I I laughed a little bit, I giggled when you said about um, dressing like a businesswoman, because I remember the same. I remember when I started Femme City, I wasn't dressing in a three-piece suit with pantyhose and heels, you know what I mean? Like I wasn't, I didn't, and, and I also wasn't networking like that. So that's where people like started ridiculing me. They were like, you know, you're building this company and you're like, you're doing it with all this like woo woo stuff and like uh, you know, gratitude. I mean, we've been doing this for 15 years. I mean, now it's like, you know, everyone talks about it, but we were like the OGs at the time where people were like really kind of making fun of me about it. But I'm like, you know what? I'm sticking to who I am. And some people will like you and some people won't. And that's okay. You know, like it, it's, you have to be okay with showing up who you are with like how you are and how you want to be seen. Also, there might be some ways that you don't, you know, I don't, I don't want that part of me to be shown. So I'm not going to talk about that part of me, but these areas I do like these areas. I do want to, you know, be out there. I mean, I'm Cuban. I talk about it often. Uh, I'm a former Catholic. I don't practice Catholicism anymore. I was a super Catholic, but those are, you know, the Catholic part doesn't really mean much to me whatever, but being Cuban, you know, that's like a big part of my identity. So I have it in my little bio. So absolutely. Yeah. And when I was first got into business, um, I met this, um, like stylist and, you know, like she picks out the clothes for you. (laughs) Yeah. They're designer expensive clothes. So, you know, she's like, you gotta have a business suit. And I was like, eh, no, but I, I mean, I do do now. So I thought, well, I, I guess I joined the chamber of commerce. I'm like, I guess I should wear the business suit, but but then I'm thinking it's not really me, you know, like you're saying. <laughs> yeah, wear what makes you you. You know what I mean? Like I um I love wearing dresses. Dresses are my thing. I love wearing linen. I live in Miami. I can wear it year round. I I don't have a business suit either. And I, I used to be a keynote speaker in lots of things and I never went with a suit. I went with a really pretty floral dress because that's what makes me happy. Yeah, another thing about um, some people have strong feelings about politics and religion, and you might turn some people away. You know what I mean? But I guess you have to be authentic. You know, <laughs> like I'm. Well, you know, 
Yeah, if it, if it brings so I follow this woman on Instagram. She is um she is Jewish and she talks about being Orthodox Jewish. And I find it fascinating. It's really like it's like her day, right? She's a physician also. So it's like she talks about her day and and the rituals that they have and the traditions and like what everything means. And I find it to be so fascinating. That's her brand. That is who she is. Like that's all she talks about. And she has like, I don't know, a million followers or something like that. Um, and for me, it's educational. Like just following her is like, these are things that I've always wanted to know. My stepfather was Jewish. He was not like uh, super Jewish. Like, you know, he'd go to like the good parties, but he was not like, you know, um, as they say, cafeteria Catholics is the same thing, like cafeteria Jewish. Like he picked the pieces that he liked and he was like, yeah, whatever. But this is a fascinating woman I follow. So if it's part of your brand and it's part of who you want to, then absolutely, um, then be all in. I'm sure she gets hate email. I'm sure she gets things that are not friendly and kind, but her whole brand is sharing what it's like to be an Orthodox woman and also an obstetrician. I think is what her, her specialty is. I'm just, so I'm saying, you I'm have gonna, that. Yeah, you know, some people might keep it separate. Like I'm involved with, as a volunteer with like a sort of political, and you know, yeah. like, but so, but I've seen some other um, businesses in my area, like they're, they're so they get they're getting involved in nonprofits because they feel strongly about it, like they're supporting a nonprofit or something. Yeah, so, it depends if it's if it's all your brand, if it's like all yeah. of who you are, and like I never share political things on my page, you know, and I don't I don't share religious things on my page. Like that's not my brand. My brand is um, making people smile and happy. I share you know things about aging, having silver hair. That's my jam. So the other pieces of me I don't share because it's not. It's not how, I don't want it to be definitive of who I am, but if I was running for office, um, if I was definitely more politically involved, if I was volunteering, then that would be a bigger piece of who I am. But for me right now, like I, I have, we have members from all, all over the place. So I really just, I keep it out. I don't talk about it, but it has to work for you, right? It has to be like how you feel, it, how big of a piece of it is it for you than you We integrate it. So, all right, we have one more minute left. Any questions? Any other questions you guys have? No, this is great. I appreciate Good. how authentic you are. Oh, thank you. Thank you like, so much. Well, talking okay. about your mom and um, he's, I'm like, uh oh, I think I need to do some work with my origin story. That definitely started to trigger something. Yeah. I'm like, oh, is that what's holding me back too? If you feel like you're stuck, that that's like the first red flag. Mm -hmm. If you feel like yeah. you are stuck, if you feel like you have done everything, you have checked off all the things that you're supposed to do and things are still not showing up, go back to your origin story What and, and pick one. Because like I said, I had so many. Pick one. Yeah. What's the one that's screaming the loudest at you? Perhaps it's what we, you just shared. Mm -hmm. Dive into that, you know, like... And maybe that's a good class any, for me to teach. Do you have any resources or anything that you use to help you like find your origin story or was it the um, therapy, the cognitive behavioral therapy? Yeah, I'm actually going to teach that. I'm going to teach that for November. Find your origin story. That's what oh. I do. So yeah. So there you go. All right. I'll <laughs> sign up. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I dove into a lot of self-help books. Um, that's how I started. I just started reading other self-help books. I mean, when I was in my, when I was in my early twenties, I had already kind of started doing that. And then I kind of went away from it. And then I went back into it when I turned 40, I started kind of getting into more of that self-help area and that helped me. I couldn't find what I was looking for. So I wrote, my first book is called, um, 10, 10 life lessons for the everyday human. And that kind of is a workbook. I think it's like $8 on Amazon, but okay. that's a workbook to walk you through to find kind of like where, and it has the 10 themes. So it's like love, it's about relationships, uh, money. So that might be a good, I, I wrote it because I wish I had had something like that to help me with my stories. Um, but self-help books have, have been huge. And then just that self-reflection. Mm -hmm. Spend some time, Kate, and we've got the self-guided worksheet section of our website. There are tons of free downloadable worksheets that I've created. There might be one in there that might help you to just get the energies going in that direction. Okay. Thanks. 
Yep. You're welcome. And of course you have now the first Tuesday of November, find your origin story. Maybe nobody else will know what that is, but we'll know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, our time is up. Thank you so much for joining me. And I hope to see you at the next one. Thanks. Thanks. It was great. Bye. Bye.